Hello, everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to continue our discussion on queuing theory. But today, we are going to uh, look at the network of queues. So, network of queues, a queuing network is a system composed of several interconnected stations, each with a queue. So, customers, upon the completion of the service at a station, move to another station for additional service or leave the system according to uh, some routing uh, rules, deterministic or probabilistic. For example, data packets traverse a network moving from one queue in a router to the queue in another router. The patients wait at several different queues inside of hospital during a single visit to the hospital. So material in a manufacturing facility may be processed by many different machines until the final product emerges at the end. Okay, so raw materials go to machine one with a, a Q and a capacity one, K1, machine two, capacity K2, machine three, capacity K3, and then become the final product. The open network and closed network. So open network means you have external arrival. And when uh, at a particular state, you have the probability to go out of this, the, the network. But a closed network, you have N customers. They're just circulating in the system, okay? In the network of queues. So in this lecture, we are gonna focus on the open network. That means we have external arrival and uh, also has a probability to exit, leave the network. So this network is called Jackson network. An open Jackson network is characterized by the network has N single station queues, okay? the are N stations. So each station, the I station has SI servers, okay? Unlim unlimited capacity at the queue of each station. So first thing, first uh, out, okay? Service discipline in, at all queues. Customers arrive at a station I from outside the network according to the Poisson process lambda I. All arrival processes, okay, are independent of each other. Exponentially distributed service time with rate mu I at a station I. So probabilistic routing, customer finishing service at a station I, and then join the queue at a station J with probability PIJ, or leave the network with the probability RI, independent of each other. So let's revisit this probabilistic routing. Customer finishes a service at a station I and joins the queue at station J with probably PIJ, okay? All leave the network with probably RI, independent of each other. So if you sum each row, okay, J equals to one from station one to all other stations, and then plus the probability to leave RI, it, it should equal to one. So this is a total probability. Now let's have a look at an example. This is a tandem queue. So customer gets served at stations one, two, three, four in a sequential, sequential order. So that means you come to one and then served after serve, service, you come to three, uh, you come to two and then three and then four station. So exponential arrival rate, external arrival rate, lambda one equals to 10. Lambda two doesn't have an external, doesn't have external. So station one has like two servers. So two servers, S1, two, S2, three, S3, one, S4, four. And N equals to four, four stations. Now arrival, external arrival rate, 10, zero, zero. And the service time, service time, mean service time is 10 minutes, okay? So mu one should be six per hour. And uh, mu two, four per hour, and 12 per hour, three per hour. So the transition P 
because you don't uh, uh, from one you can go to uh, hundred percent you go to two from two you go hundred percent to three from three you hundred percent go to four from four hundred percent so you're gonna leave the network so this is a tandem queue so the the, the notation symbols are all here now let's have a look at uh, amusement parks so the customer from external okay enter the system like uh, can enter once the customer enters the gate he has equal probability to enter all attractions okay so that means from external you have probability to enter after you enter the gate you have probability to go to each uh, attraction so and from each attraction, for example, roller coaster, after you finish this, you have equal probability to visit all other attractions. So that's why you have a fully connected network. And also when you go from outside, you have equal probability to visit any attractions. So this R, you know, roller coaster, F, fantasy, M, uh, merry-go-round, W, water tube, J, journey to the moon, G, ghost mountain. So at each, at each station, you see this one has two cars, each carrying 12 riders, last two minutes, okay? So if we look at this one, how many servers we have, two cars, 12 riders, right? Each carrying 12 riders. So this is 24 servers. And uh, what is the service rate? Two minutes, right? Two minutes means 30 per hour. So it's 30 per hour. And uh, for merry-go-round, merry-go-round is 35 riders. So 35 riders and three, right? Three minutes. So it's 20 minutes, 20 per hour. And the external arrival rate, because once the customer enters the gate, he has equal probability to enter like uh, every station or every attraction. So thinning split the poison process. So we got 100 per station arrival rate. And from each attraction, there are equal probability to enter uh, other attractions, all the other attractions and leave the network. So leave the network is one over six. So this is what we get, okay? All the values. Now those values will help us to calculate the properties of the uh, network of queues. We're gonna see how to do it. Let's see. First, let's have a look at the stability condition. So consider the J station, outside arrival, lambda J, internal arrival, BJ. So the total arrivals to the J station is lambda J plus BJ. And then, but the BJ can come, the arrival, internal arrivals from other stations can be uh, AI, PIJ from station I to station J. So the arrival rate of internal customers from station I to station J is AI, PIJ, you add all of them together. This is a BJ, internal arrivals to J station. So the traffic equation will become AJ equals to lambda J plus all other stations visit J, okay? So if we put this in the matrix form, A, lambda and it will become a this is a vector lambda vector and we have transition probability matrix right so it will become a equals to lambda i minus p inverse in order to solve for this one to be stable i minus p must be invertible we must have a unique solution in order for every station to be stable we talk about each station is MMSIQ, right? So, because we, we assume the Jackson network has infinite, in, infinite Q length. So this is MMSIQ. We talk about the arrival rate must be less than the service rate. So SI mu I. So for the, for the station to be uh, stable. So these two conditions must be satisfied for the network to be stable. Now let's check the stability condition. So A, the arrival rate, right? And uh, A is the total arrival rate from internal and external. This is a unique solution, we can get it. <clears throat> and S mu 12, 
obviously service rate is greater than A1. So how do we get this top? Because we have S1, mu1, S2, mu2, S3, mu3, S4, mu4, they all equals to 12. This S1, mu1, S2, mu2, and we can get, they are all equals to A, uh, no, greater than A. Greater than the service rate is greater than the arrival rate. So this is a stable and the unique solution too. So now if the system is stable, now we can calculate the limiting probability. Limiting probability is XIT is the number of customers in the I station at time T. So X1T, X2T, XNT, and uh, because we have N stations, the state of the network at time T. If T goes to infinity, what's the probability? Like we have N1, N2, Nn, and in uh, separately in, in all the stations. So this will become P1, N1, P2, N2, Pn, Nn, because they are uh, independent. So limiting probability, there are N customers. This Pin, Pin is a limiting probability that are N customers in an MMSI queue. So this is for one station you have arrival rate AI, service rate mu I, okay? But you have S servers, okay? So this PI, based on the MMSIQ result, we can calculate the PI, the steady state probability, limiting probability. This is PI zero, rho I for the uh, N. Now, rho I N is actually equals to one over n. This is the row, how the row is defined before. Now the only thing changed is we have, this is for the i station, okay? P1 means the first uh, station, P2, second station. Now based on this result, this is what we derived before for MMSIQ. Now we can get a PI zero, and then further based on the row i, we can calculate a PI n. So this, in the steady state, what we are actually doing is treat a Jackson network as N independent MMSI queues. And they are coupled by the traffic equations. So let's, now let's calculate the probability the network is empty P0000 for the tandem queue, okay? So station I behaves as a MMSIQ with arrival rate AI, service rate mu I, okay? Now we have SI servers. We got a P1, the station one, P10. This is what we got based on the, uh, based on the equation formula we have before for the MMSIQ. Uh, if you have questions on oh, how did we get this, you go back to the previous lecture, check the, MMSIQ, okay? How did we calculate the limiting probability for the MMSIQ? This is the equation we derived before. Here we directly use it. So this probability will be 0 0.0909. And then P1S1, this is actually times rho one, okay? And then we got 0 0.12626. Then we can get uh, L1, once we got P1, S1 and uh, P1, zero, we will be able to calculate the, this is the average length, okay? And of the Q. <clears throat> so this will become 5.4545. So similarly, we can get L2, L3, L4. So expected number of customers in the network is actually L1 plus L2 plus L3, L4. This is actually the expected number of customers in the network. L1 is expected number of customers in station one. Now, if we, this is for the tandem queue. Now let's have a look at amusement park. Compute the expected number of visitors in the park in the steady state. So Li is expected number of visitors in the i's right. So we, based on these equations, okay, we can calculate L1 to L6. Then expected number of customers in the park to the park in steady state is actually this one, L1, L2 to L6. 
163, okay, 0.5741. And which ride has longest queue? And these are the average number of customers in the ice ride. And uh, we have people in the service, right? So LIQ is the expected number of visitors in the queue, not in, including those in service. So this will be LI AI minus new I. So this is those in service, okay? So based on the calculation, we will be able to see, oh, the ghost mountain ride has the longest queue, okay? So through sort of this analysis of network uh, models of the queue, you will be able to see which one has the longest queue and maybe you can do some further capacity planning of the amusement parks. So in the next lecture, we're gonna present a case study, how to build the network model of queues and then use the network model to really do the capacity planning for the healthcare system. So this is the end of this lecture. See you in the next lecture.